happy Saturday, everybody. My name is Renee Q. Boating, and you're welcome to the Today's Woman Show. It's going to be oh so exciting. You'll find out why. We'll be right back. It's time for the monologues. This is when we hit the streets of Accra and we speak to different women to get their opinions on various topics. Let's hear what they have to say this week. This woman I would say is someone who is health conscious, has her life planned out, who is educated, who dresses well, speaks well, and um, publicly is accepted and very intelligent. Um, today's woman is someone who is not afraid to be herself. Someone who is hard working, hard working with dreams and ambition and work, working towards it, not just with dreams and ambition. This woman is a responsible woman. She has her life well planned out. She tries to manage her home as she's working, so there is a balance between the two. Today's woman should be someone who is hard working who is humble, has dreams and ambitions, and is working hard towards it. It's time for the woman on the move. She's hardworking, a go-getter, and she's pressing on. Let's see who she is. For years, patience has held on to a demanding passion while juggling the equally demanding role of motherhood. In the last 21 years since she's been at it, she has had to take on various jobs to make ends meet while keeping an eye on her coaching career. school. training training because on most of the time in the place in the in pa then the play by the child can come then pa come by then day on the day patience is supported by her husband but changing economic times mean she has to engage in trading activities in and around the bakano township to contribute to the upkeep of their family mutanazi bit of mutuntan menu funya ma mutana credit and kaka kra na must support football no no nyi ni fie nyina while patients optimistically looks forward to a change in fortune, she represents a tiny percentage of a large number of active sports professionals who take up jobs on the side to survive. This is the case due to a virtually non-existent standard wage structure for sports professionals in Ghana. Okay, ready? for today is Selena Beb, our co-mentor. She's popularly known as Selena Beb. I call her Selena Beb and I'm really excited to have her on. A very busy woman who's made time for us today. Thank you so much and you look amazing. Oh, thank you so much, Thank Renee. you so much for coming on the show. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Yeah, you look fabulous. Oh, thank you. We are, we are today's women. Yeah. Hello. Hello. <laughs> it's part of, you know, of it's course. just in our blood. So thank you so much for coming on and I'm so excited to have you on. There's so much to talk about and I just like reading your profile. Mm -hmm. So let me tell you, she's a trained broadcast journalist. 
She's a fashion accessories designer and a fashion entrepreneur. I'm sure a lot of you who follow her on Instagram, if you don't, go and follow her, Selena Beb. She's opened a wonderful store, which we'll start to talk about. But it's really, really interesting reading your profile now. And even, um, it's, it's just so common with fashion designers and designers, uh, you, know, in, you know, in a whole, that they started with something so, I mean, you, you, were, you were a broadcast journalist. Yes. You were in radio for a long time. Your degree and everything is all, you have a law degree. So what, what pushed you to fashion? <laughs> It's just my natural passion for fashion. It sounds like a cliche, you know, but I've always been fashionable, even from a young age, you know. I remember from the age of five or six, I actually tell my mother what color shoe I wanted to wear. My favorite color was red when I was young, oh. so everything was red, <laughs> all my bags, shoes, everything red, you know. So I've always loved fashion. So um, my parents wanted me to be a lawyer, mm -hmm. so they encouraged okay, me to okay. study law okay. yeah but then um, did you enjoy it no i didn't enjoy it okay. i didn't enjoy it i found it too tedious boring and so much reading so um it after the degree you. it wasn't me i realized that wasn't for me right. you know i i wanted to do it because i thought it was prestigious so i said okay they want me to do it Please um it's prestigious them. let me try you know i wasn't too sure what i wanted to do in my sort of middle teens, like yeah, from the age of 15 yeah, to 18, yeah. yeah. So um, they managed to persuade me. But when I grew into myself around the age of 21, 22, I realized I know this law thing. I'm going to be a normal, average lawyer. And you know, mm. I, I like to stand out in everything I yeah. do. So um, what I really wanted to do was to be Oprah. Okay. Yes, okay. I started watching Oprah Winfrey when I was around the age of 15, and I was just so fascinated by the yeah. woman and the way she touched lives. So all I knew was I wanted to be like Oprah on TV, having my own talk right. show, you know. So I later on realized that, okay, that kind of work is broadcast journalism, mm. you know. So I thought, okay, mm. if this law thing is not working out, or I don't want to do any more, let me venture into the media, honestly. So the main reason I got into media was because of wow. Oprah Winfrey. Wow, so she yes. is an inspiration. I mean, she's Huge an inspiration. inspiration to me as well, which yeah. is amazing. Now, how did your parents feel about that? Because it, it's just very popular in our culture, in Ghana, in Africa as a whole. Like, you do what your parents want you to do. And like you said, and I like that you pointed at that, that at that time, yeah. at that age, you didn't even know yourself. Yeah, you confused. didn't know what you loved. You didn't know what you wanted to follow. So it's just normal to just go with what your parents say, you know, out of mm -hmm. respect, out of wanting to please them. They are paying the fees, <laughs> you know, all that sort of thing. Yes. So um, you, 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 you've studied in the UK for a while. You've been in the UK for a while. So then let me just quickly ask you this mm -hmm. before I go back to the question I want to ask you. Yeah. But then what do you think then? Don't you think that the year out option in the UK is, is probably good? You know, after, after A-levels, they take a year out. If you want to, you can take a year out to work for a bit, mm -hmm. to get a bit of, you know, experience here and yeah. there. And I find, uh, uh, when I was living in the UK and, you know, the students were doing that, a lot of Ghanaian parents who were in the UK, when they are talking, say, why should you do that? Straight from A-level, take them to university. They are wasting time. Yeah. They'll just go and they'll never come back and all that. But I realized that those who did that in that one year gap, of working, you know, doing everything, found that this is what I really, really love. And so then they went to university and studied what they really, really, really loved. So then they became excellent in mm. it. So what do you think about that? Yeah, I think that year out thing is a very good thing, yeah, because um, you get to um, hopefully work with a company or in an area that you enjoy. So then you find your calling. You realize right. that, okay, this is what's for me. Plus, they gain some experience as well. So I think mm. they're going to invest it a bit more mature, a bit more responsible yes. because they've had to work. Yes. And, you know, in the UK, the parents don't pamper you too much. So you probably have to... <laughs> Get some money, yes, save money your money. Yes, once money starts coming in, you have to contribute. Yes, <laughs> you know? yes, yes. And then um, you have to catch the bus on your own. And right. I think it helps you to be more independent and also mm. find what you truly are passionate yeah. about. It's definitely a good thing. And um, I think career fair is necessary mm -hmm. as well. You know, mm -hmm. my time, um, I finished A-levels when I was uh, in 96. Okay. You know, and I was only 17. I finished mm. school quite early. Mm. Um, my parents, I keep saying my parents, I'm trying to avoid talking about my parents too much, but they wanted me to dodge the new system, the SS the system. SS. Yes. Oh, well, I'm an SS chick, hello. I know. <laughs> I'm your senior. <laughs> 
<laughs> so yeah, so I was part of, part of the last badge, you know. So I finished with quite young, and like I said, I wasn't too sure what I wanted to do, you know. And um, there weren't too many careers fairs around that time organized mm. with students. But these days, mm. I see them all over the place. Yes. And I encourage that. I think that definitely yeah, will very, help very good. our young ones. Okay. Mm. So now back to your broadcast yes. journalism, because it's really, really interesting. You were on radio for a while. So how come you went on radio and not TV? Because it was really TV you wanted to do. Mm. Okay. Great question. So like I said, um, the whole dream was I want to be, you know, Oprah Winfrey and all that. So um, after my law thing, I abandoned it. I did all jobs in the UK here and there, working for mostly retail companies, doing customer service jobs. Mm -hmm. But in 2008, um, I, I felt this urge to move back home. In fact, it started in 20, 2007. Okay. It took a year before I gathered the courage to move back okay. because, you know, people were discouraging me. They said, why do you want to go back to Ghana? Staying in the UK is definitely better than moving back to Ghana. But I just felt like But you were in the UK for a short while, right? Because you did your O and A levels here in Ghana? Yeah. Okay. I was there for 11 years. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I went okay. there after my A level. Okay. Yeah. And then uh, after my law degree, I stayed and worked for about seven, okay. eight years before coming mm. back. So it was... In total, 11 years, almost okay. 12 years, actually. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So um, people tr kept trying to discourage me, but in the end, I just thought, no, it's time to move back, mm. you know. Um, it was during the time of the credit crunch. I got made with Dandans, right, Dan, right, yeah, right, twice, right. actually. Right. So after the second time, I said, ah, this is God talking yeah. to me. Let's move back home. And also because I wanted to get into the media. And leaving the UK, um, once you were not born there, even though it's my, you know, my accent is a polished Ghanaian accent, you know, the British people still can tell you're not, you know, yeah. you're not British. Yeah. And um, I, I, I felt like the media, they might not accept me. Mm. And they were very coming particular back home, with the names as well at yes. the time. And so I thought coming back home would help me to venture into the media field, which mm. is what I really wanted to do. Right. Uh -huh. So when I came, within a few weeks of being in Ghana, luckily, I saw an ad on TV where GBC was advertising that they were training people to be broadcast journalists. Oh, wow. So I said, oh, this is what I need to do to <laughs> fulfill my Oprah yeah. Winfrey dream. Yeah. So I enrolled at the GBC training school, got trained there for, um, I think it was a two-month course. Okay. Yes. Was, was that good? It was really good. Okay. Really good. It was like an intensive course, mm. and I got trained in broadcast techniques, mm. how to speak phonetics, you know. Oh, wow. Yeah, even though I lived in the UK for 11 years, it was at GBC. Were there things you, you learned? Yes, I learned how to pronounce things phonetically. Mm. Yes, how to read the news, how to talk and pace yourself nicely. I still talk too fast, but hey. <laughs> <laughs> it's you. It's, it's me, yeah, but I try to, you know, slow down. And so I got trained at GBC, and then... Um, out of my intake, there were about, I think, 40 of us. I was the very first person that was employed by GBC. Oh, wow. Congratulations. And Thank you. And I wanted to go on TV, of course. That's what I wanted to do. But I said no. Why? Because um, apparently my chest is too big. They actually said that? Yes. So um, GBC TV section uh, rejected me. They said my chest was too big. and I, They actually said that? Yeah. If I'm reading the news or presenting, people will be... It will be destructive. So I was told, I was advised to go and read you. But I'm looking at your face, actually. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Um, you know. Yeah. How did you feel about that? What was your response? Oh, I was a bit hurt by that. No, but I was very hurt by that, you know. A bit hurt, a bit depressed <laughs> for a few days. And, and then like, what was your response? What did you do so about it? So initially, I was thinking, I'm not going on radio. Because I didn't want to go on radio. And guess what? The first program they made me do on radio as well was High Life. I had to present a High Life <laughs> I like Did you like, well, I like Daddy Lumba and I like Amachi Dede. But then, I mean, like... The only sort of high-life musician I liked at the time, who apparently is not even a proper high-life musician, is Kudrin Tree. I okay, love yes, yes, Tree. Yes, I, I like yeah, it too. I, yes, I like almost, yes. not almost, I like every single Kudrin Tree song, you know. Yes. So I thought, okay, I'm going to play Kudrin Tree. And I said, no. It's not a Kudrin Tree show. It was a GBC, show. they told me that oh, Kudrin Tree is not even a proper high-life. Yeah, they wanted me to play Nana Kwame and Pedro. But then, but then when, 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 you are, when you are the presenter, <laughs> Kaku, are you the one... Like, you know, playing the songs as well. Yes, Do because you in choose GBC, the song? We're not sports like the... When, well, we, yeah, they are not sports <laughs> like the private radio stations where you're a presenter, you have your own DJ. You know, most of these mm -hmm. female presenters, they have DJs mm -hmm. that play for them. Mm -hmm. No, GBC, you are the presenter, you're the producer. You produce your own show. Wow. So I had to do the song selection, yeah, everything. Did you grow it? Did you, did you begin to love it? I loved it towards the end. Really? I'm not going to lie. Yes. Really? I loved it. I got to love all those oldies, uh, Jaco Nimo. Yeah, but Bidu, the, at the time, all those ones, some of them, there were such songs The Boga High Life people, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I grew to like all of them, so now I love High Life. So you can imagine, so initially I was like, ah, me, radio. And I was going to do High Life as well. 
So I wasn't happy, but someone told me, try it. Mm. You know, um, mm. Kamala Duma was my very good friend. Okay. Yeah, so I talked to May him. So he rest said, in peace. Rest Amazing in peace. man. So it was Kamala that advised me that, you know what, well, try different things. You know, try mm -hmm. music. You never know. Try the newsroom. Right. Try radio. Eventually, if you're meant to be on TV, you end it up on come, TV. Yeah. yeah. So I took it, and guess what? I loved it, you know. Oh, and wow. then. God is amazing. I wanted to be a talk show host on TV. I ended up becoming a talk show host on radio. Oh, radio. So I started hosting a relationship program called For Me To You on radio, um, GBC at Unique FM. Yeah. So I was doing a high life program. And so you're uh, doing two shows at the same time? Two shows. At some point, okay. I was even doing three. Oh, wow. I was, the, I was the producer for the so you're drive really, show really as well. really, really good. I was the producer and for the drive show. So. As well. I'm just sort of trying to close my eyes and listen to your voice. Yeah. And then, yeah. I have probably... a very good genetic voice, I've oh, been told. Uh, uh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I hosted a drive time program as well for uh, a couple of times because I was the producer. So, whenever the presenter was not around, I and sat in. Them. So, um, I did that. I was at GBC for four years and wow. then I went to Radio XYZ. So then, I mean, this is amazing. I mean, you could have <laughs> gone on and on and on. So then what, how come, and, and at what point did you just leave and then delve into fashion? Right. So when, uh, whilst I was at GBC, I decided to do another degree mm -hmm. in journalism this time. Mm -hmm. So I enrolled and I uh, graduated from GIJ. Okay. So whilst I was at GIJ, I transferred from GBC to Radio XYZ. Okay. Yes, because I got a better offer. Okay. <laughs> Did, were you poached? I was poached, yes. Okay. And I, I got a much better offer, so I transferred there. Mm -hmm. So I was um, at GBC, not GBC. XYZ. I read XYZ mm -hmm. and then finishing my top-up degree mm -hmm. at GIG as well. And whilst I was doing this, I don't know, I just started dreaming about starting my own handbag range, you know. Because I had moved back to Ghana. This was in 2000. And I moved back in 2008. By the mm -hmm. time I started my brand, it was 2012. Okay. Yes. So beginning of 2012, um, from the time I moved back to 2012, I've been using a lot of African print bags because mm -hmm. I love them. Mm -hmm. And people always compliment me. People want to buy them for me. And they ask me, do you do them yourself? Because there was one particular designer I used to use her bags all the time. And people thought that I was even the one doing the right. bags, you know. So one day I dreamed. But it still didn't click to me. Let me go and start my own handbag range. Mm. Even though I love accessories, by but the way. But why, why was it though? Was it yeah. because you thought that there, were, the, the, there was already like there were already bags in the, on the market? I'll come to that. So I've always particularly loved bags and accessories mm -hmm. because, as you can tell, I'm plus size. So mm. there were certain designs I wanted to wear and I couldn't. Like I love mm. hotter necks, but I can't wear hotter necks because mm. I'm plus size and I have a huge chest and yeah, mm -hmm. it just wouldn't look mm -hmm. good. But with accessories, I could wear any boring outfit, accessorize and make it look interesting. Mm -hmm. And then I love bags as well because it didn't matter what size I was, I could use any you size can carry bag. carry the bag. That is, why my love, that is where my love for accessories began, mm. okay? So I've always secretly, even before moving back to Ghana from even a young age, I always secretly thought, oh, one day I'll have my own leather handbag range. But I mm. thought I was going to produce them from Italy and it'll be, it'll be all pure leather. Mm. Uh -huh. So admittedly, that dream was there. But when right. I came back and I saw all the young designers in Ghana doing all this lovely stuff with the African prints, including yourself, mm -hmm. I got inspired. And I mm. thought, you know what? That dream that I had when I was a teenager... It, never, it wasn't dead. It, yeah. Because yes. I used to think, oh, it's a dream and it will never come to life. You know, I was like, you know what? It's possible. Yeah. And the way people were complimenting and trying to buy the bags for me, I realized that there was a ready yes. market for it. Yes. So that is where I got inspiration from to start wow. the fashion brand. Yeah. Wow. Well, congratulations. Thank that, you. So do you actually make the bags here? Yes. You do? Yes. So what happened to the Italy dream? Was it that you... Why? Why? No, let me not answer the question for you. So why did you decide to, to produce the bags in Ghana? Because I was fascinated with the bags that were being produced in Ghana. Mm. When I first saw them, I thought, oh, they buy foreign bags and cover them. And then I realized, I know, they're made from scratch here. So I thought, wow, bags made in Ghana. Because when I was growing up as a young girl, I wasn't seeing that those yeah. made in Ghana. The only ones I saw were those burger bags from the yeah. north, and you know they had that strong smell, and I wasn't that keen on mm. them. But to come back and see people doing bags fused with the leather, Italian leather, and you know print and all that, I was fascinated by it, and I thought, wow, this is this would be a good selling point to yeah. be able to tell the foreign market that right. this is produced in Ghana. Ghana, yes, in mm. Africa, and it's handmade right. because that is a big selling point for yeah. me when I travel. You know, they always ask, like, are these made in China? Because, you know, mm. my bags are so well made that people sometimes don't believe they're made in Ghana. Mm. You know, so um, I, I decided to produce from Ghana because 
why not? You know, yeah. we're doing it. And then you're also giving, you know, opportunity. You creating know, jobs for creating people. Creating jobs and Projecting all that. my yes. country and showing yes. people that yes. Africa has yes. something good to offer. And the great thing as well with, you know, coming back from the UK, you, you, you worked in retail stores. Mm -hmm. So you have the exposure, you have experience, yes. you know the difference in like very good quality. So you're able to even offer a better training to your workers here for them to understand even finishing because sometimes the whole bag or outfit you could buy a bag or outfit from from a designer here and it looks so 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 great on the outside but i always say just mm -hmm. as beauty is on the outside and the inside so should your bags your shoes anything that you make the the, the finishing should be very very good as well yes. and sometimes it's not like they they do it out of laziness sometimes it's because they do not know so it's great you know, for designers like you, for people like you to come back and to actually train those here who haven't had the opportunity or the exposure that you have. So I think I'm going to toast to you on that. <laughs> okay, we're going to have a toast to Selena Bev. Yeah. And you better go get one of the bags. <laughs> <laughs> lovely cocktail from the one-to-one -one bar here, mm. the Melbourne Pick. This is very lovely. Nice. Very, very, very nice. I, I could. That. Very, very, very nice. I think it's got some apple in there. Yeah, I tasted that. <laughs> so do you think that, let me ask, do you think your yeah. legal background has, has, has touched or impacted your fashion business in any way? And oh, how? Oh, yes, it has. You know, I have knowledge of the law, especially intellectual property law. Uh, have you had any struggles? You've, I mean, we've talked about your struggles in the UK. But here, in owning your own business, there are so many people out there, so many women, I'm sure they are watching now, and they're thinking, hmm, I want to start my own business, so, but I'm afraid. I don't know if I can. You know, a lot of, a lot of, I speak to so many people who say, oh, well done for what you've done, but I don't know if I can. So there are still many people with great potential that are hiding behind this couch that we are sitting on. <laughs> what word would you have to say to them? Oh, be bold, you know, be courageous. It's not easy, trust me. Uh, we sit here, we talk here, we make it look like it's easy. But it wasn't easy. You know, when I started, I started my business with just 200 cities. Mm. And I was working on radio and I couldn't afford to rent a shop. So I was... Selling for my car boot. I'll finish my radio job, go visit people's offices and meet people up because I'll use Facebook to advertise and all that. You know, but what I'll say to anybody watching me and they want to start their own businesses, first of all, be bold and start. Don't let people always feel like, oh, I don't have any money. Don't let capital restrain you. Save up. No matter how little you have, you, you can start something with it. I started with just 200, like I said, I went to buy some leather. I already had some fabrics. And then I found someone to put them together for me, you know. So, but make sure that whatever your passion is about is where you can make money from it. Mm. Some people are passionate about things that they can make mm. money from, mm. you know. And um, try and borrow from family if you can afford to save mm -hmm. and start your own business mm -hmm. as well. That's one thing I'll say. But ultimately, I'll say be courageous, be bold, stop procrastinating and start wherever you are and build up. you get there. I, I totally agree, especially I love what you said about the capital because a lot of people have the vision and they think they have to start at the vision. But you have to start small and work towards the vision. So like maybe in your, in your mind, you saw a, 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 a shop with 100 bags, but you could start with one bag and then grow on it to get to the 100. So that's, a, I, I really I love that. I just five bags. Yeah, I mean, I, it's, I, we have such a similar story because mm. when I started accessories, I started from my basket. I had a beautiful basket, which I still have. And I only had about 11 pieces in it. And I took it to one lady and she bought six. Oh, wow. She bought six of them. And it was only word of mouth. You know, at that time, even social media and all of that hadn't started. I mean, my father was very, very angry with me at the time because I paid for a degree for you. You're supposed to be a banker and now you're selling. So a lot of, that's a lot of like the also, I mean, now he's so proud of me, of course. He's in here. You know, yes. So, so yes. proud, so, the parents, so supportive. So like, you know, if you're a parent watching as well, maybe can I plead and then just say that maybe, you know, think about it a little bit and rather encourage your children to blossom into what they want to become. They'll be more successful that way. Sometimes you give it a try. Sometimes the parents as well are afraid that the, the, the children will fail. So it's out of love and not out of, you know, anything else. Oh, but of then, course. Yes. And I understand, you know, when, you know, my parents were not too happy with me at the beginning of my business, I understood where they're coming from, you know, because they had paid for a law degree, I abandoned that, then I went and did, a, you know, a journalism degree again, I did well, I was doing well in the media, so I could understand why they didn't, you know. <laughs> but fashion today is but, booming. Yes. Fashion is such Once a huge Once they saw industry. that I was going somewhere with it and it was taking off and doing really well, you know, they understood and 
I go 100% support, you know. But initially, they were not too sure because they're like, hey, she's going to abandon this yes, one too, you yes, know. Yes, yes. Me, myself, sometimes I look back and I'm like, hey, the audacity, how mm. did I do this? Honestly, because I had no background in fashion. Mm. I didn't even know how to cut mm. patterns. So, Selena, what do you think about role models and mentorship? You know, because as, as a fashion designer, I'm sure, and then also you built a, a fantastic brand. Now you have a huge business. So maybe younger ones will come to you asking if they can come and learn from you or if you can mentor them. Or What, what do you think about that? Um, it's very important. Uh, mm. Mentorship is important. Um, as we rise, we need to rise with the young ones as well. Mm. And they definitely need guidance, you know. I need guidance. I have great role models and mentors and I love to mentor young people as well. Anybody mm. that approaches me and say, oh, I look up to you, would you mentor me? I always jump to it, you know. And oh, wow, I, you do? I try to, yes, and I try to make time and um, be there for them, mm. you know, because one of my um, role models, Auntie Afi of Jandel, um, Auntie Afi yes, Amaro, yeah, yes, yes, she's yes, brilliant yes. and she's one person who would actually go out of her way and actually call me. She doesn't wait for me wow. to even call and say, Auntie Afi, I'm having problems. She'll actually call and say, how is business? Try and do this, take this So she step. gives you yeah. advice and everything. And um, it would be great for everybody to have such a person in their life, yeah. guiding them along the way. Yeah. And Auntie IP is not even into fashion. So that means that mm. your role model or your mentor doesn't have to be in the industry that you're in. Yes. It's just something that you admire and respect about. Why, why did you choose her um, as, as, a, as a role model? Just so that people understand, <laughs> you know. Um, she's a very close family friend. And I've known her since I was a teenager. Mm. Yes. So... Um, and she always took interest in whatever I did. Mm. So she became a natural role mm. model and mentor as well. Because, right. yeah, people don't realize that there's a difference between role model and mm -hmm. a mentor. Mm -hmm. um, a role model can be somebody who is very far from you, but their life or what they do inspires you. Mm -hmm. But um, a mentor or a mentor, mm -hmm. Ghanaian stent is a mentor, mm -hmm. is somebody that you actually know, somebody you can actually go to and ask them for advice and guidance in whatever you're doing. Yeah, so they're following your footsteps and they're guiding yes. you along the way. Well, that's been so, so fantastic. Let's take a short break. We are back. And Selena, one question I'd like to ask. I know you've added a clothing line to your brand, which is fantastic. Are you designing the clothes yourself and what's your inspiration? Yes, I designed the clothes myself. I have a team of people who put them together. And um, what inspires me, what inspires me as the everyday woman, uh, my clothing line is just for female, just for ladies at the moment. Yeah, mm -hmm. we'll add a, the male collection, hopefully next year. And so it's the everyday woman and um, my customers, you know, they've been asking for it. They keep saying mm. we want to come and buy clothes and buy accessories yeah. as well. Like Why don't you make it a, yeah, it's a one-stop shop? And mm. so that's what I did just to give my customers more value and uh, a better experience when they visit me. Right, right. And is there any like sort of um, theme or something to your, to your clothing? Yes, the first collection is Colors of Africa. It's called Colors of Africa. Okay. So it's a lot of colors and mostly African prints. And I use different kinds of fabrics. Okay. I'm using the, the normal African wax print. Mm -hmm. I'm using the African print silk. This is one yeah, of my designs. Really nice. Yes, yeah. I'm using a lot of the northern kente or what oh, we call yes, fugu as well. Them. Yes, because yes. Yes, I thought that's something different. Yeah. And the silk and I even have um, jeans, denim, denim oh, okay. dresses. Okay. So I'm using different kinds of yes. fabrics and it represents the True African. The, the today's woman, huh? <laughs> the today's woman. Yes, the yes. quintessential and, and, and you know, earlier woman. on as well, you were saying that um, because of your size as well, there were certain things that you didn't get. So is that, does that influence your, any of your styles now? Oh, yes. And my sizing as well. I go mm. um, all the way up to size 22. Okay. Yes. And I believe that covers most, you know, yeah. <laughs> sizes yes. in Ghana. And anyone who wants any size that is beyond 22, Yes, I'm willing to customize so you do that for you as well. As well, and then you you do. Um, we, it's mostly ready to wear. Okay. Yes, we only bespoke for you if we don't have your size available. Mm -hmm. But um, we, we're trying to stick to ready to wear. So yeah, it's whatever is in the shop. In the shop, yeah. Because I still see myself as an accessories brand. I don't want to become you know, uh, those designers that do hot couture stuff. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Mine is mostly casual. Okay. Casual wear. And since you started, I mean, you've been in your own business for for quite a while. You've worked for other. Um, businesses, you've, you've done other things. Mm. Since you started your own brand, we've already encouraged 
women out there to go out there to be bold and to start. And, I, you know, of course, it's not easy at all. There's certain difficulties that you... What is one thing that you think, if it changes, will really, really change the industry? In Ghana? Or, yes, in Ghana, or production, for example. Mm. Um, I think we need a lot of training. Mm. Yes, a lot of the artisans and the people who work in the fashion industry still don't have enough adequate enough or adequate training. So I think training programs would definitely be helpful mm. for these artisans. And when I say training as well, it's not just about um, improving their skills, but for them to know work ethic as well. Mm. A lot of them just mm. work anyhow, mm. you know. It's like when they need money, then yeah, madam, they're begging you for mm. work. And when you need them to produce for you, they're dodging you or yeah. playing up, you yeah. know. So I think definitely, a lot of education would definitely help. Mm. So these artisans will actually work for you, like full time. You actually go to them, so you sort of like contract, give them contract jobs. Is that what it is? I have some who work full time for me. Okay. And some too that I give. Because when jobs it comes to, to the full time ones, then mm. you probably have to do that training on the work ethic. And that's what I was talking before about the UK bit, mm -hmm. about getting that exposure and that knowledge and then passing it on to those who don't have, like, you know, the opportunity to go out there and know, because some of them don't actually know. <laughs> they think you just have to work to eat. Yes. So if I already have food, no work. When I don't have food, then I'm looking for work. That sort of thing. Anyway, it's been great having you on the show and you're going to see me in the shop soon. <laughs> Thank God for mobile money. If I don't have cash, I can pay with mobile money. Definitely. And um, we have a few gifts for you. So oh, Yaz wow. is one of, um, one of my sponsors. Mm. They are one of our huge sponsors, and they've decided to give every guest a gift. So this is a gift from Yaz. They ha there's so many things. They do the Yaz sanitary pads, which are really popular. Okay. But they do other things. There's baby wipes in there, toothpaste, toothbrushes. There's all different kinds of things and some of them you can even give us gifts so this is a gift from Yaz to Selena thank you so much okay oh, wow. totally unexpected ah, you deserve it <laughs> you're doing a great job I didn't uh, you deserve it, it. <laughs> But wow, this is so nice. Thank you so much. And then too. I have a gift for yes, you as and well. Oh, wow. Yep, so this is my gift to okay. you. So I've started a Rene Q Love Pillow. Now, this is actually Aww. to promote self love in women. So this is a pillow that I, I did for myself. And anytime I, I, you know, I'll just squeeze it, I sort of feel <laughs> like I'm cuddling myself. Aww. And I thought, but that's what self love is loving you, appreciating yourself, and everything. Mm. So I'm doing this, and it's, it's out there. So this is a Rene Q Love Pillow. And it's basically so to encourage women to say something all the time to themselves that they love about themselves. Because it's so easy to say lovely things about other people and not you. This is about self-love. So I'm putting you on the spot and I want you to tell us one thing you love about yourself. Mm -hmm. Wow, what do I love about myself? <laughs> um, I love my smile. Yes, I think I have a nice smile and... Um, I've been told that a lot of times as well. And um, yeah, I love my smile. And I think I put smiles on the faces of people yeah, as well. I try my best time. to do that. Yeah. Yes, because everywhere you go, you have to spread love. Mm. And mm. It's, it's far much better to love than to hate. <laughs> You heard so. that ladies, you know, that it's very, very important to put a smile on the faces of other people. So ladies, it's up to us. We have to go out there and we have to smile. We are Today's Woman. We'll be right back. Thank you so much for watching the Today's Woman show. Today has been really inspirational. I love that Selena said, be bold. Go out there and do what you have to do. If it's in you, press on. You can do it. Don't miss it next week at 11 a.m. on TV3 and DSTV channel 279. And this program won't be possible without my sponsors. Many thanks to Movin Pick Ambassador Hotel for giving us the lovely set every week. Also to Yaz, to GTP, and the Rene Q Love Pillow for pushing for women to love themselves. See you next week. Be bold. You are today's woman. Stay blessed.